Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. We will listen to our first hymn now, which we like to sit to listen to the hymn. Thank you. very much of the royal family after the death of Prince Philip the Duke of Edinburgh on Friday. We will remember him today in a litany of thanksgiving before the intercessions and during the intercessions as well. And also at the end of the service, 
um, we will stand for the national anthem, which the choir will sing for us. I'm afraid the rest of us are not permitted to join in, which is strange really for the national anthem, but uh, it is the way it has to be at the moment. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christi eleison. Christi eleison. Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now listen to the Gloria. Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Alleluia. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, my Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, poor Thomas. He doesn't half get a bad press, does he? Doubting Thomas. 
misses out on the first resurrection appearance and refuses to believe until he's seen the evidence with his own eyes and felt it with his hands too. How much better it is for those who believe and yet have not seen. Well, it does make you wonder, how much did the other disciples really believe? Jesus, who they saw dead and buried in a tomb, appears among them, appears in a locked room, as if a ghost. They're delighted to see him. Peace be with you, he says, and he shows them his wounded hands and sighed. Do they touch him? Do they see and feel and believe? He breathes the Holy Spirit on them and sends them out. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And he leaves. What happens next? I can imagine the disciples looking at one another with confused, shocked expressions. Did you see him? Did you hear him? Did that really just happen? Can you believe it? Perhaps they did, perhaps they didn't. But surely some doubt remained in their minds. It's only natural to doubt, to question what you see and hear, and to question what you believe. It's all about heart and head. Your head tells you that you saw and heard the risen Christ. But does your heart believe it? Thomas doesn't believe. And why should he? In Luke's gospel, when the women who have found the tomb empty run back to tell the disciples that Jesus has risen, the disciples don't believe them. They dismiss their words as idle gossip. Peter only believes when he sees the empty tomb and the linen cloths with his own eyes. So why should Thomas believe? He wasn't even there. I mean, would you believe this incredible story at first hearing? Would you not think it was a combination of wine, late nights, disappointed hopes, and wishful thinking. Maybe Thomas wants to believe in his heart, but his head won't let him, not until he has the evidence, the proof of his own experience. And luckily for Thomas, he gets this. A week later, Jesus appears again in the same way. The doors are shut. Peace be with you, he says. Thomas sees, he hears, he touches, and he believes in his heart and his head. And so we find in Thomas the model of Christian belief, a balance of reason and faith nurtured by the grace of God. And we all need Thomases. You know those sort of people who aren't afraid to ask difficult questions, who say what everyone else is thinking. I had a wonderful friend at college who would all, in lectures, would always ask the question that everyone else wanted to ask, but was too afraid, worried that they would feel, look silly, or think that they should know the answer. We need those people who aren't afraid to ask questions. Thomas represents all of us who doubt and question, both those among the Christian community at the time that John was writing and us today. It's part of our human condition to doubt and question. God speaks to our minds as well as our hearts. And it's about striking a balance between the two. We can never comprehend God in our heads and if we try too hard to do this, we risk missing experiencing God in our hearts. 
However, if we live too much in our hearts and try to suppress the doubts and questions that our minds raise, then we risk causing ourselves much heartache as we fear we're not good enough, we don't believe enough, we don't trust enough. So I would encourage you to ask the difficult questions of faith. Those that you are afraid to ask, those that you think you ought to know the answers to, you can be sure that you won't be the only one. But what of Jesus' words, that seemingly harsh rebuke? How much better for those who believe and yet have not seen? Is Jesus criticizing Thomas for having a naturally cautious reaction to what is, after all, unbelievable news? But I think these words recorded here are aimed less at Thomas and more at us more at those who are going to come later, those who will not see and yet will come to believe. So should we sit here smugly, secure in the knowledge that our faith is better, stronger, firmer, because we have not had evidence to prove it? Or have we? Resurrection appearances and road to Damascus experiences are few and far between. But this is not to say that we cannot encounter the risen Christ in prayer, in silence, in the beauty of nature, in the lives and actions of others, wherever and however God speaks to you. For God is ever present, continually revealing himself to us again and again if only we have eyes to see and hearts and minds open to receive. We too can encounter the risen Christ, not with our eyes, but with our hearts, and can come to believe. Belief comes and grows through the grace of God and not by our efforts alone. We cannot become more faithful or more trusting merely by trying harder to do so quite the opposite. It is when we stop trying, when we acknowledge our dependence on God, when we balance the questions of our minds with the experiences of our hearts and allow God to reveal himself to us. Do not be afraid to be a Thomas who doubts and comes to believe so that we too when we come face to face with Jesus, recognize him and like Thomas cry, my Lord and my God, amen. Thank you, Rose, for that really good sermon. I thought that was really good to hear how we can all question so much, so many things about our faith, about the world. It's called theology and uh, it needs to be done. And uh, thank you for your work today. Shall we stand to say the creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, by whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel now. I'm going to first of all read a listening of thanksgiving for Prince Philip, and when I say, let us bless the Lord, he replied, thanks be to God. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. As we mourn the death of Prince Philip, let us give thanks to God in faith and trust. For the gift of Christ Jesus and for all whose devotion to him has sustained the life of our church and nation. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, His late Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, and all the Royal Family, for the Ministers of the Crown, and all bear the privilege and burden of government. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For all people touched by the Duke of Edinburgh's devotion to public service, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our own lives, giving thanks for all who have gone before and asking that we might go forward with confidence and hope, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, in whom we live and move and have our being, Grant that your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and that we may ever trust in your unfailing love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our intercessions. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Bishops Martin and Gully and all your church in the service of Christ. We pray especially for Bishop Gully as she prepares to take up her new post as Bishop of Chelmsford. We give thanks to God for her work in this diocese. And we pray that all those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially today for the Queen, being the head of the Church of England. We give thanks for her faith and commitment even as she mourns for her husband and consort, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray for world leaders, that they may know your love in their hearts. We pray especially for the many countries where there are civil wars and disputes. Remember today in Myanmar and Syria, 
in the many countries of the Middle East and Africa where politics have failed and people have resorted to violence. We pray also for our own politicians as we come to local elections. They may work for the betterment of life for all people. Also, let us pray for the people of Northern Ireland that the current tensions there might not bring back the violent troubles of the past. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another, and love as he loves us. As we come to a gradual normalisation in our country, as shops and hairdressers and outdoor eating is allowed, as well as being able to meet friends outdoors, help us as loving Christians to be mindful of the regulations, not for our own sake, but for the sake of others, that we may all come safely through this terrible pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, And in a moment's silence, let us remember any we know who needs our love at this time and the healing power and love of God. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Amen. prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Anne Higginson of this parish and Florence Brightmore, also of this parish. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our lives, we thank, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for the love he show, shared among us, and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy. Through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn especially the Queen and members of the Royal Family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Catherine, St. Peter, Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We come now to the peace. The risen Christ came among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. With you all. And with you, Eileen. Peace, everybody, church. That's it. Oh, oh. Okay. I've got a little whip. And then there's a little whip.
Peace to you children. Yeah. <laughs> Say peace. 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 Remember to mute yourselves again. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful work. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, grant by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink is all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, 
in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in the mighty resurrection and glorious and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary the Virgin Mother of God, St. Catherine, St. Peter and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Body of Christ. 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 
to remember all those who are physically with us today. So we say the prayer for communion in separation. Lord Jesus Christ, life giver and good physician, here you meet me in our need. In a world marked by corruption and marked by death, draw me into true life by your selfless sacrifice Help me to live for others and not for myself. May I, who cannot now receive you sacramentally, embrace you more fully in my heart, mind, and soul. Help me to unite myself to you in spirit, 
so that I may be drawn closer to those from whom I am isolated in body, who, sharing your life given up in death for us all, may we grow together in love into a richer and more profound communion of life. Amen. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll listen now to our final hymn. And then we will listen to the national anthem. Um, we will stand for that. Although we can't sing, we will stand. And then uh, we will uh, listen to a fanfare then, just before we set out. Okay. The Lord be with you. And all the same. 
the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.